Welcome back, everybody, to Fly the Coop. I am here with Jamie Foley, the owner of Jamie Foley Designs. Hello, Jamie. How are you today? Hello. Good morning. Happy Friday. Thank (laughs) you. Thank you. Happy Friday. I just wanted to take an opportunity to jump right into it and talk a little bit about who you are, where you have come from, and what you have created, because you're an impressive woman, Jamie. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, my journey has been always changing, which I think is pretty normal these days Mm -hmm. for everybody, especially women as they kind of go through their child rearing years and then they kind of move into their next phase. I did start uh, in human resources and then ended up having children and we moved a lot with my husband's job. And during those times, we had a lot of homes, but I spent a lot of time just doing little fixes, sometimes big fixes and really just kind of, my goal was to make it a home. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it really kind of changed it enough to when we sold it, it became a profitable thing for us. Um, So I started doing night school when my kids were small and became an interior designer. And yeah, and it's all kind of come together in this crazy world. And now here I am, I started my business and I'm doing it for other people now. You're an extraordinary talent. I met Jamie and her husband, Brandon. Um, at an open house. And we immediately gravitated and had this awesome conversation. And I had the opportunity to um, tour your beautiful home that you purchased. It's been four years now. And you went through an extraordinary renovation on this home. And we're going to throw up some uh, before and afters as part of Um, this presentation so you can see what Jamie can do because it is amazing. Tell us about that process and that'll kind of morph into the top five easy things people can do to be really impactful and affordable if they want it to be, um, to really make a difference in their living space. Well, I will say, you know, I think everybody, especially after COVID, your home really is your sanctuary. I truly believe this. I've always believed that you should come in and feel I'm home. Absolutely. Sometimes you walk in and you're, if it's another, you know, stressor or something else is going on, it doesn't become a place where you really want to be. And I think that's really important. So I always, first of all, look at function. Number one, does the space work for you? If it doesn't, how can you change it? Meaning how's the furniture laid out? Where's the kitchen? Is there enough light coming in? All of those small changes is really what I look for in a renovation. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it just kind of goes into, yeah, I think logistically when we're living, how are we going to live? What's going to be the place we really want to be? What's not? And you kind of work around that. And then with your budget, you have to kind of pick your parts where it's really worthwhile to invest your money. And then there's other parts where you can kind of go a little bit lower, Um, even lighting. I mix high and low. Um, but it's just kind of knowing where to put your money and understanding really what it can do for you. Just the small changes alone can make such a big difference. Oh, completely agree. So, you know, we're constantly um, looking at ROI when we are helping people. So not at your situation where you did a total gut job and renovated this thing over a two-year period, and you were able to be quite profitable in doing that. Um, when people have been in their home and they've decided to make a major move and they haven't done any work, where do you find there is improvement um, in terms of uh, profitability to increase the uh, sale, the net outcome without spending a lot of money? Okay. I, well, you know, as I just said, I think when a buyer walks into your home, they want to feel great. So I always think, what are the things that would make them feel great? My number one is an investment in your time and that's it. It's just decluttering, organizing, making sure that it really, everything kind of has its place. That alone can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Second would be paint. And that probably is the biggest game changer of all of them. I think a coat of paint, a fresh coat of paint, it looks fresh and good. It feels great. That, that is a, biggest transformer of any space. It can make it feel lighter, it can make it feel brighter, it can make it feel more of a newer home. And there's just so many things that it brings. So that's my number two. Uh, And then if you want to continue on, depending on, you know, sometimes you just want to live this way. Sometimes you want to do it for a sale, but the little things are, you know, the cabinet, your hardware cabinets, sorry, cabinet hardware, Mm -hmm. um, kitchen, bathrooms, 
that's a simple, small change that can make it feel completely different. I actually had a friend, we were working on her kitchen and we got a new countertop and we changed the hardware and it felt like a completely different space. New space. New yeah. Space. Economical too. Economical. I always say the power in the paint Absolutely. and the detail in the small things that are affordable, like hardware. Hardware is a remarkable game changer. Remarkable game changer. If you're, you know, you just need to measure your, what you currently have, take it to a store and just get the same size and, a diff, you know, whatever you're choosing, more of a modern feel or maybe a different tone, maybe a brass tone or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But yes, it, it can really ultimately change a room. Absolutely. So in your model, because I think there, there's a lot of talent out there. They're not necessarily career. You've been able to turn this into a full-time career because you're that, that extraordinary as a designer. <laughs> And we'll make sure we share um, how you can be found so people can see your portfolio of work. For those out there that love design, they aren't necessarily, you know, career designers, but want to be impactful in their own home in a profitable way. Um, How did you start with your very first flip, if you will? You know, it was a home, you lived in it. Yes. What was the secret sauce in your mind to being able to be profitable in doing that for those that are interested? Right. Well, you know, there's the small changes we just spoke about, but mm-hmm. in most of my homes, uh, they're older and I kind of love that. I love the older homes with character. And then I always try and modernize it a little bit. There's usually a wall that can be opened or taken down to kind of connect spaces, mm-hmm. not completely taken down. You know, sometimes structurally it's impossible to do that but you can just create a large wide doorway that still feels open. It connects the spaces. That's a huge thing. Um, That's great advice. Really great. People don't uh, assume they don't see that when they're walking into a space. Um, And especially with the older bungalows, you know, tutors where you've got those smaller kitchens and the attached dining room with the connecting door, every single one of them quite simple to do and pretty affordable to open that wall up when you're redesigning the kitchen. Yeah. What's your favorite go-to on, as a segue and we'll jump back. What's your favorite go-to to get a really awesome kitchen? Like where, how would you go about doing that affordably? Affordably. I look at the space and how can we extend the space? So a lot of older homes have smaller kitchens. So it would be exactly what we just spoke about, of breaking down a wall. A kitchen is someplace that everybody migrates to no matter what. It just seems to always be the place. Mm -hmm. So I look at the workspace, is it functioning? And then, you know, from a, if you can fit an island in or a peninsula or something like that, a place where people can sit when you're cooking and, or, you know, your kids are eating breakfast or whatever it seems to be looking, so I've got a fly around me here, Um, looking how to expand that space and make it a cohesive with the rest of your home, but be a place where you can actually congregate, where you can actually be there, feel comfortable in, uh, and then, you know, there's the working triangle that like I always talk about with kitchens uh, and making sure that your stove and your fridge uh, and your sink, they're all kind of working together to make that really um, function for you. Mm-hmm. So when you're working through design in your mind, if you were to pick three spaces in the house to dump the primary money, mm-hmm. what would they be and how would you do it? Kitchen first. Always. Mm -hmm. It is something that I think can make or break a home for some people. Uh, Some people love a renovation. That's great. Others don't. So for Mm -hmm. me, I always think when they walk in, they're going to feel like I could just move in right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I agree. Absolutely. Number one. Number two is a a bathroom. Any bathroom, all of the bathrooms. And, And even if it's just the paint, the hardware and the countertop, like we just spoke about, or a new faucet, new mirror, whatever it is. Um, lighting is another thing that small changes, again, big impact, uh, but bathrooms are important. So kitchens and baths, uh, you know, that's a well-known thing, but they're kind of the deal breakers, I think in homes are the deal makers. And, you know, I, outside of the small things, I think that first impression is really, really, really important. Mm-hmm. I think that your curb appeal, your planters, if you have a little porch, um, setting some chairs out 
that for me is people walk in and they want to feel great, like I said earlier. And I think those little small things just make it feel like a home. I just absolutely make it agree. Feel great. I think both of you, both of us gravitated to each other because we're very like minded that way. Like the, the, the ability to take any space and make it feel really comfortable. You just, you want to just sit and enjoy it and take it all in. It's not hard to do that, but people do struggle with it. Like they really, they can sit with a half vacant home for a year because they just don't know where to begin. Um, staging. So that's one of many uh, talents you have and sourcing um, is a big deal right now. We are going to talk a little bit about sourcing and what's happening in the market because that has been impactful, right? And renovations and just staging a home period as a lifestyle space. I have found you, Jamie, to be extremely resourceful in finding materials, finding uh, there's a lot of time spent trying to figure out sourcing. You've done a beautiful job kind of uh, navigating that challenge. Um, share with people how you do it, because I think there's an opportunity there um, to be supported by somebody like Jamie. Um, if you're in the midst of a transition and you just don't know how to get started because of the labor shortage and the material issues. Right. Thoughts? When we're talking about accessories, mm -hmm. you know, Sometimes I just kind of buy what I gravitate to, but I just, little things like vases, um, a stack of books, um, a stack of books with a vase on top of it and a little bit of greenery. I don't use a lot of, I'll, if, I'll do a real greenery if it's a tree, or sorry, I'll do a real tree if it's something big, but small little pots around the house, they usually just go to your local um, nursery or wherever you find it and just you know, it's, it adds that little bit of green into the whole space. But yeah, I just kind of layer everything in bookcases or on a table. Um, things like that are always great. Sourcing, there's so many great shops, I have to say, around mm -hmm. Minneapolis, everywhere. From the bigger stores like a Crate and Barrel or a Pottery Barn or Room and Board to the little stores, which I love, kind of all sprinkled all over the place. Mm -hmm. so just those little things. Some people love going for antiques or antique searching. I love it too. I found two wooden bowls that I absolutely love. They are in every home that I have. Uh, it's an investment because it's something that, you know, you try and stay away from the trend. So I always think, what is something that I will carry with me in each house? So if I am spending a little more on that wooden antique bowl, it's right. worth it because I use it for many, many years. Absolutely. I think the um, share there is don't be afraid to collect and collect the things that you love Yes. and implement them into design. Right. Mm -hmm. Your home should be a collection of you, mm -hmm. right? The last thing you want to do is walk in and look like you're in a store, right? Because yeah. that's not you and that's not who you are. So mm -hmm. I really do, especially first thing when I go into a new client's home, what do you love? Tell me why you have this piece and tell me what it means to you. Mm -hmm. And I really, I do 100% of the time incorporate that into the design because that truly is them. It represents a time in their life. It represents a story that they have. And that's how you want your home to feel that collected feel from over the years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still around. <laughs> yeah, but So this is a wonderful segue. I think I always like to blend um, the gift, uh, which you clearly have with balance. How do you figure out the balance? the work-life balance, raising children and managing a household and two dogs and a husband <laughs> and a career. What's the magic sauce? I don't think there is magic <laughs> sauce as you hear everybody say. No, um, there's not. Usually I feel like there's always a ball dropping somewhere. My kids are older and they're teenagers now. So there's a little bit of independence, which is nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I do... I really do try and do that hard stop at the end of the day and um, at the end of a week. I think it's really important, especially in a creative position. Yep. If I'm not refreshed and feeling great, I'm not creative. So right. it is important for me to have that by this time today, I will stop and I will just put it all away and live my life with my kids and with my dogs and all that kind of stuff. That's to me really important. 
time to myself, which is so hard as a woman, we don't take enough time for ourselves. We feel mm-hmm. guilty, we, you know, there's all, it's just so important, whatever you choose to do. So I do try and meet with friends. I try and just go out shopping on my own, whatever it is that kind of fills me up is what I choose to do. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's an answer for balance. I just, it's hard. There's a lot of things going on and I guess you have to just go through it and understand, give yourself some grace is what I always try and say, because it's just, it's a lot. It's yeah. only one human being trying to do so many things. So it's I agree. Yeah. You're not alone. Like every, every time I ask that question on an interview, including myself, um, everyone cohesively says the same thing, being present, trying to be present in the thing that you're in the middle of, um, understanding and giving yourself grace because a ball does drop and it's inevitable because there's only so much one human being can do. Right. And, you know, having, finding the joy in everything and, and the patience, right? Because there's components of daily living when you're parenting or dealing with the household or dealing with spouses and all things that they're going through and they're managing and then dealing with clients, right. And being there to be able to receive what they are, the support that they need. Um, it's being patient with yourself and, and, uh, and just being grateful. I think gratitude to be able to do what you do every single day. Absolutely. So if you were to, we we've actually done, we've done quite a lot of work here over the last month as you're quickly building a business for all those young entrepreneurs out there that are building out their business. What is the one best piece of advice that you can give to them in order to perpetuate um, the business in a positive direction, because you certainly have been able to pick up some amazing clients um, through the work that you're personally doing. And I think the social component is a big piece of that. So what piece of advice would you give everybody? Uh, Authenticity. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly believe that you need to be who you are and you need to do what is natural to you. And it will all come. It's a really hard thing. And believe me, when I started, people said, just go for it and just do it. And there was something kind of holding me back. I felt like I needed to have all the pieces of the puzzle together before I could take that first step. Mm -hmm. And the truth is they're never all together and you're always learning and it's always changing. Mm -hmm. So once again, give yourself some grace, have an open mind, learn as much as you can and just kind of go in and be yourself. Social Mm -hmm. media is huge. I'm terrible at it. I I Mm -hmm. It's I'm a very work in progress. Like to be in my in my work zone, and you know, and I know I should be doing a lot more. A goal of mine, but yeah, that's such a huge piece today of any business and how they can grow very, very. Quickly. It really is, and when you've been doing, like you and I both have talked about this, there's a, a component of time invested into weaving this new platform into life, and there's another. Uh, another platform that you have to give yourself some grace. I always say, get started, go for it. It, You don't go for perfect. You go for done, like move forward, baby steps. It's okay to have a fail here and there. You learn from it, you move forward and give yourself, you know, you're learning, learning how to incorporate all of this and trying every single day and improving and learning from other people. That's really what it's all about. And I will say in this business where I thought I had to have everything, you know, together before I started, I'm learning as I go. And that's really, when I say learning how to understand your client, really learning to understand what they're asking for, learning just different things that happen. But the truth is none of that happens when you're actually doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest lessons are in that everyday work and you will come across so many different situations and with experience, that's how you learn. Absolutely agree. Absolutely. There's going to be mistakes and fails. That's normal. And I kind of sometimes look at that as, okay, that's good. Now I know that now I know moving into my next project, what I'm not going to do. Mm -hmm. That's just as great as anything. So I'm preparing, preparing people that are considering um, going into a big project. And if they were to interview you to come in and do an advice, you know, a, a lifestyle session or a counseling session, 
how do you, let's just talk about it. How do you package yourself and how do you, um, what are the options to work with you? How does that work? Well, I essentially offer two services. Uh, I offer a full service design. That's where we come in and I pretty much take it all over, meaning that you don't have to worry about all the little headaches. I will deal with your contractor um, as far as scheduling and what's happening, making sure your selections are there. I usually narrow it down to one or, or two or three selections for whatever it is, kind of guiding you in that direction and helping you kind of get through the process. Mm -hmm. It's a really hands-off approach. Um, and that's a lot of people just prefer that way. Mm -hmm. The other service I just started offering was the 10 hour package. I love that. And this comes in, it's, you know, I unfortunately can't manage a project with that because it's a set amount of time. And when you're managing a project, there's so many moving parts, right? But it really is. And what I'm using it for is if someone's building, they have a pretty good understanding of what they want. They just need a little help. Like I'm just by your side while we're choosing tile, or I'm making a suggestion on this, or I'm helping you put a paint palette together different things like that. Just sometimes you just want a second opinion. Sometimes you want someone to do that for you because that's not your strength. Where your strength is maybe lighting. Um, I just kind of come in and fill the pieces and provide any advice information that I can. You know, we just met a client through social, in fact, from some of the postings. Um, they fought somehow, she, she's in Georgia and she found me somehow. So I introduced them to Jamie and we're going to meet with them at the end of August. And they, um, he's done actually quite a lot of project management just from their many relocations and many homes. So um, Jamie's going to be coming in to um, make decisions around color, tile selection counters. That's a perfect example of morphing. So they may or may not need additional help. So I love your... Um, package option because it gives people a concrete plan with the awareness of I'm going to get X, Y, and Z out of it. And if I need more help, I love that. I don't see many designers offering something like that up. And I think it's a wonderful way to step into a project and have some clarity around yeah. what it'll look like when it's done and then figuring out the budget. Right. Exactly. Where and to I begin? <laughs> And what are yeah. what is something you should focus on right now? Mm -hmm. What is something I'd probably wait into a phase two? Uh, just all of those little things. Sometimes, you know, I sit and speak to a client and we walk through and together we come up with a really great plan. It's it, it just takes, you know, working with someone, bouncing ideas off someone, figuring it all out. Um, but yeah, it's to make sure that you're being guided in the right direction to make sure that your selections are going to be cohesive they're going to fit the style of your home or your personality or the function of the space it's just kind of making sure all of those pieces are together uh, and that's it's an, it's a 10-hour commitment it's you know a good way to get information and not have a huge commitment financially to a designer so yeah it's i think it's a great service and i i started it because there's a lot of people requesting something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, we are, we do a lot of business in Edina. Um, Edina is known for its, um, many ranch style homes. And I think we have a whole lot citywide, a whole lot of inventory sitting out there. That's really dated, really well built, really beautiful homes, really dated. So, um, check out Jamie Foley's portfolio because she's got a great way to go in there and transform without um, spending a massive amount of money doing so and being highly, highly impactful, really highly impactful. Do you have any more words of advice before we finish up today, Jamie? No, I think, you know, I, like we said, pain is huge. Organization is huge. And, you know, it's funny, we always do all of these things to our home, getting ready to sell it. And then I sit back and say, why didn't I do this when I lived? Oh, here? I know. <laughs> so really my goal is before I want to sell it or even thinking of, I'm going to create this way of living for myself and for my family, because it really, really is important. And it really does set the tone for how you feel 
Oh, I completely agree. I think it's the time, right? I always find my motivator when I am, we're getting ready for a party, right? Or we're, I always say getting back to ground zero, getting back to that place where everything feels really tied together because chaos ensues when you have family and school and kids and kids coming in and out of the house and projects going on and yada, yada, every single family, everybody, everybody's like that. Like you are not alone. Uh, not at all alone. Not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could be, uh, you know, the best designer like Jamie out there. And there's going to be a day where I, I would want to come over and Jamie would say, you know, you got to give me two hours. I'm just not ready to let anybody into this yeah. house. I, I mean, my type <laughs> A personality, really, I had to let it go. I call myself a recovering type A because when you have kids, you just, it's impossible. Yeah. So I've I know. had to learn that, Hey, it's going to be a mess sometimes. And Hey, you know, there, there's going to be dishes in the sink. And I always think one day that's not going to be here. So I'm really trying to just take mm -hmm. it and appreciate it. know that they're comfortable here. They want to be here. They want to bring their friends here. And that's really, really what it's all about. That poor fly just. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, okay. Well, you're such a delight. Um, we're going to, uh, Jamie's got a pretty impressive Instagram page, everybody. So we'll make sure to put a share down there. Check Jamie out. We'll have her phone number there. If you have any design or staging questions, she'd be happy to visit with you. Yeah. Jamie, thank you so much for spending some time so today. Great. I really, really appreciate it. Such a joy. Thank you so much. You too. Okay. Thank you.